Today, Dr. Ujaya is going to talk about the role of SPAFA, and we have uh, put out some copies of a 1992 document that was created uh, from an underwater archaeology workshop held at SPAFA. SPAFA has done so much good work over the years in a training, capacity building, and being the, really the center of the region's uh, capacity for underwater uh, ar archaeology. So without further ado, I'd like to call upon Dr. Ujaya to, to come up. Yes, uh, good afternoon and thank you for inviting me here. I'm a, it's always a pleasure to come to Singapore and to see much progress has been made in the last... Well, every time I come here, there's something new. You know? So, uh, uh, congratulations on the hard work that uh, people put in, in the museum system. Um, now, I, I don't have a paper because I wasn't going to to give anything, you know, but uh, I, uh, I insisted that I should say something or, or involve, be involved in some discussion. So I came up with some uh, PowerPoint that will give you some idea of what we have been doing in the field of uh, protecting underwater cultural heritage in Southeast Asia. Um, well, we belong to to the, the bigger organization, which is older than ASEAN, and was set up uh, in Thailand with the view, I think, uh, to to work like a UNESCO in the Southeast Asian region. So, uh, and it's called uh, Southeast Minister of Education organization. So the Minister of Education got together and formed a consortium that uh, was working in various fields in the field, like UNESCO, in, in the culture, um, education, and science. So um, there is some cooperation among the ministries, but the main movers of SIMIO has been the centers that have different specializations. In medicine, there's a center in Bangkok called TropMed. There's a, a center in, in Bogor called uh, Biotrop, and so on. So uh, uh, at the moment, there are eight countries that have centers, and there are 18 centers. And Simo Spafa is one of them. And we specialize in archaeology and fine arts. Now, why archaeology and fine arts? Because at that time, that was in the 60s, since early 70s, that uh, there was a realization that Southeast Asia, especially in uh, mainland Southeast Asia, and also uh, in the islands, uh, there are many archaeological sites, and also uh, fine arts traditions that should or that need to be looked after. Um, and so uh, organization was set up to, to, uh, to train and to have workshops and to disseminate information about all these aspects. Um, recently, the last few years, we also set up another center in, in Yangon called the History for, uh, Center for History and Tradition, which has been operating you know, in the, uh, the Myanmar way. We have uh, <laughs> the ASEAN way, and this is the Myanmar way. Okay, this is a, this is not so much the Thai way, but there are always Thais running this. And I, in the Simeon uh, with uh, Prince of Pat who was a fine uh, uh, scholar in, in history of arts, and then Dr. Pisit, uh, who is a well-known uh, archaeologist. So I'm. Uh, I don't know, I'm just a historian and maybe an uh, organizer and uh, somebody that's trying to move the organizations along the way that it uh, should, should be. So, uh, so the idea, I think I have to emphasize that uh, it's regional cooperation. So uh, it's got to be on Southeast Asia and we have uh, activities that will bring all the countries together in education, science, and culture. 
and so on, you know, uh, make lives better, according to education, preventive health education, culture tradition, information, communication, technology, languages. There's a center in, in Singapore called RELC, which is a, a language uh, center, but mainly teaching English. You know. um, poverty elevation, agriculture, we have a center in, in the Philippines called Sioka that uh, concentrates on agriculture. Um, and it's run by uh, the ministers of education of, of 11 countries. Uh, unlike ASEAN, we also have uh, Timor-Leste as a member. So we have 11 countries. So uh, all of the Southeast Asian countries are uh, working together in various ways. Um, But uh, I think in, 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 in our field, it's mainly the Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Thailand that have been working together in, in, in archaeology. And of course, we've been working with the Fine Arts Department, with Kurt uh, Abrams uh, uh, Center. And, and with them, we have been providing access to basic knowledge and practices of maritime archaeology. But now, I think we need to review its role uh, for the future as uh, we move into this post-UNESCO convention world. You now that uh, is making uh, all kinds of uh, idealistic uh, proposals and that, uh, that if you, you, you commit yourself, then you have to carry it out. And so in Southeast Asia, nobody has committed themselves to carry it out. There's uh, Cambodia, who is very brave in, uh, <laughs> in uh, getting involved uh, to carry this out. Um, the underwater ecology was chosen as the main subject of specialization for the Thai SPAFA subcenter. At that time, there was, there was a system of subcenter. And it was decided by the finance department that we should have uh, underwater archaeology. Uh, as, uh, as our main activities in Thailand. So, uh, from 1978 to 2003, SPAFA was involved in, in many training courses in underwater archaeology, in conservation of underwater archaeological objects, and a consultative workshop on underwater archaeology research. Um, so this is a list of of all the activities that were conducted uh, from 1978. So you can see that uh, most of them are underwater ecology training course, uh, all in Thailand at uh, at Brahms, uh, facilities. Um, and it's still going on doing that. Uh, in 1992, there was a a consultative workshop in underwater ecological research in Indonesia. And I will come back to that because there are some very interesting proposals and recommendations that are still valid today. So the countries that benefited from, the, from these workshops are mainly Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, and Thailand, with Brunei, Vietnam, and Laos. Uh, though I don't think Laos has a as a sea, you know, but uh, anyway, Lao now knows about it. Uh, uh, <laughs> should be Cambodia, but <laughs> um, so there's some uh, 75. Uh, we've I've counted uh, 75 alumni, what we call alumni, the people that have been through. And I worked out that we spend all those that you saw 180,000 US dollars. Now, uh, during all these courses, you know, the eight or nine courses, eight courses, which is, I don't know, is this a lot or a, not a lot? Mm. We could spend more, right? Yeah. Well, so uh, proves that you can do things cheaply in Thailand, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also have been uh, involved with ICROM and Getty Foundation in a project called Core Asia, uh, 
uh, the last seven years, which uh, ended uh, last year, but uh, in fact we are ending it this year, and uh, the, the one workshop before last was held uh, here with the kindness of uh, ACM, which was uh, very successful. Um, so we had a, a, a course that was part of uh, Core Asia uh, in 2009 in uh, Manila and Subic Bay in September 2009. I believe uh, there was a lot of water in, in Manila at that time. There was a typhoon or something. So, so there was more water than, than you wanted. <laughs> uh, it was in, so uh, we, uh, that last workshop, you know, uh, these people attended from Brunei, Philippines, Malaysia, Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, Cambodia, and also Timor Leste, and plus France and Japan because it was uh, it was uh, supposed to be more international than uh, regional. So, uh, so again, uh, a handful of people benefited from this. Um, Spaf uh, was involved in this uh, very interesting discussion at this workshop, which uh, I'll just run through. I think you have the, the, the paper, but if you can't be bothered to read, I'll just give you some uh, accounts. There are some uh, comments and also resolutions. So these are the comments. Now, of course, I, I can say that uh, we did a lot of great things with these this, uh, courses, but uh, some, there's one, this is a French expert, say that uh, many member countries are still unable to undertake systematic research on their own. Joint Service Asia project involving underwater approaches from the region should be set up. Um, and we should stress the, the, the Southeast Asian underwater archaeological sites have important educational, recreational, and tourism applications that uh, there's some money in it. <laughs> the, the lack of clearly delineated policies and legislation for the protection and preservation of the region's underwater archaeological resources make it difficult for the member countries of Southeast Asia to adequately pursue a concerted course of action towards the protection of these important and non-renewable resources. That's a very long sentence, you know, but what it means is that, in that uh, there's a lack, there's a lack of government's uh, role in all of this. You know? um, uh, it was also pointed out that weak public education programs in the region on the importance of the underwater agricultural resources and their potential has been identified as a limitation. The member states of Simo Spafa are at different levels in their efforts to develop their capacity in underwater archaeological research. Well, this is, this is quite clear to us, too. So uh, there's an even development now. So what should we do? Um, in fact, uh, the meeting came up with what I counted could be grouped with 15 resolutions telling us what to do. Uh, the Southeast Asian Maritime Archaeological Radio belongs to people of the region as an, an important component for the proper understanding and appreciation of the area, history, society, and culture. This has to be stressed, okay? The region's maritime heritage deserves the adequate and effective protection and preservation by the member state through Simeo, Spafa, and ASEAN. Yeah. Uh, only representatives uh, from scientific institutions are allowed to undertake underwater archaeological exploration and excavation activities in Southeast Asia waters. So no, no, no amateur, right? Um, regional cooperation and underwater archaeological research protection and training for the member countries of Simus Bafa was highly recommended. So more of the same. Each member country only uh, representative. Oh, I think uh, maybe it's good. Uh, uh, each country should establish underwater archaeological division 
in order to organize research policy and administration. Each country should register all underwater sites and finds to SPAFA for competitive study analysis and available only to SPAFA country members. So uh, you all have to submit information to me, <laughs> what you have. And this, I can, I can assure you, it's uh, top secret. <laughs> and I will not sell it to, to anyone, right? Yeah. Each country should collect their available data on maritime history, etc., and submit to SPAFA for the comparative information to all members. So uh, we, we have to be a big bank you know, of information. Uh, they should start standardized research methodology data, base, etc. And SPAFA should be the center for all this. Member countries should initiate exchanges between governments and underwater heritage uh, topics. Okay, that's, uh, and SPAFA should sponsor more seminars and workshops. SPAFA should initiate legislation. We, <laughs> we don't even have a, you know, an ASEAN uh, uh, parliament yet. <laughs> yeah, I should initiate legislation as a region and using the EEF as a model for cultural protections, pro protection or protective, uh, protection zone, I think. Uh, so, uh, uh, you never heard of this, right? CPZ. So, oh, that's something uh, to think about, yeah? Like, uh, you know, uh, exclusive zone. Uh, this is what we do in Thailand. No, no excavation, no sale within that zone. SPAFA must strengthen cooperation with other Western countries. That it, uh, we only should not only do deal with our, among our civilizations, but also have to have the French and the, you know, Canadian, Australians with us, uh, which we do anyway. SPAFA training program should move from country to country. That is, uh, not only in Thailand, but also in other countries. Of course, we have in Thailand because of the facilities available there, you know. Um, so, this is, <laughs> and, uh, and I don't think much has been done. <laughs> uh, because it's too much, right? Uh, too much for us, you know, and, and I don't think, I think it was uh, sort of uh, unmanageable. So anyway, uh, well, we recognize that our role is, is the, the, the middleman, you know, and also uh, getting in touch with everybody and try to work together. And I think that the remarks and the resolutions are still uh, pertinent and should be revisited. But meanwhile, capacity building in maritime archaeology, archaeology for Southeast Asian countries should also be continued. This is what we will do. Uh, in the past few years, it was uh, tapered off a bit because I think uh, we were doing other things because we also have to, to, to uh, look into the uh, cultural heritage in other areas, you know, in especially what is now called intangible cultural heritage within the performing arts. So uh, I think uh, we, we got into cultural development programs, culture and the climate change and things like that. So uh, we, we uh, did not do so much on archaeology. So if you ask me, uh, I think we will favor the ideas that have been discussing, we've been mentioning a little bit, that uh, community um, participation. We've been doing that in other cultural heritage sites or land and whatever we do, we try to get the, the communities together as, as Gunnar Prem already explained, that the uh, finance department is also doing that, so that they will have custodian roles in the long term. Uh, SPAFA also supports UNESCO approaches in the protection of UCH, but also take into account each country's policy and limitations uh, of, of, the, of, the U of the UNESCO uh, convention. And I think that uh, we can host a regional meeting 
in the near future to consider 1992 resolutions for realistic implementation. Uh, so uh, I think uh, we need to look into the details, and you know, if you want the information database should be together, uh, and, and other cooperative ventures that, uh, well, people think that uh, they'd like us to do, we'll do it. But uh, we are not going to do anything that people uh, are possessive of, you know. Uh, we will only do things that people agree that would be useful to everybody. Okay. So um, I think my time is up. Just uh, so this, these are the things I've been doing, and and I uh, I've only took up this position last October. So I'm trying to reorganize uh, SWAF a little bit to veer it towards more of its original mandate. So I hope that uh, you will help me and give me some advice on uh, what you want to do, and, and if everybody agrees, we'll do it. Okay. But uh, meanwhile, we'll have uh, workshops and the usual things. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think even the, the uh, commercial companies would agree that uh, for, uh, if they get licenses to, to do uh, excavation, there should be at least an official uh, person you know, that know what is being done, right? I think uh, you were saying that in most of these uh, uh, excavations by commercial companies, they usually left to their own, own undertaking. So uh, I think we need to have Soviet Asian uh, uh, people that know what it's all about uh, even if they wouldn't have the facilities or wouldn't have the, the means to carry it out. You know. I, th I think that's, uh, that's so, so the training that we do, I think is still useful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>